Hi everyone, I'm Jessica. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be working on block 11 of the 2024 Scrappy Sampler. Let's get started. This block has a couple different elements and the first thing we're going to do are easy corner triangles. So I have my red piece here and I have two background squares and we're going to kind of do this like a flying geese but the piece is a little bit bigger. So I lay up a square so that it matches with the corner on both sides and we're going to sew from this point to this point on the diagonal. And once we do that, we'll just trim away this excess, leaving about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm going to finger press this open. And then we're going to take the other square and match it just right across from this one. And we're matching the edges again. And then we're going to sew along the diagonal from this point to this point. trim away the excess here and then this is what our piece is going to look like so it's similar to a flying geese but it's got this bottom part here and then the next thing we're going to do is take our small orange rectangle and we're going to sew it onto the bottom here so I'm going to change my foot right now I have 34 D on I'll use that for flying geese and I'm changing it to my quarter inch foot 57 D so once I have that on we can sew these pieces together. So I'm just going to turn it sideways. I'm gonna sew it to this bottom portion here. And sometimes when um, I'm working with small pieces, I have a tendency to use less than a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I just think like, oh, this piece is so small. If I use a seam allowance, look how much of it I'm sewing on. But um, just make sure you do keep that quarter inch seam allowance so this is accurate. And this is, again, small. This is only an inch. So when this is finished, only a half of an inch of this is going to be showing. This is what our unit looks like now. So we have the top point, this is the point of our flower, and then we have this inner portion. We need four of these. I have my other uh, three made, and I'm, we'll just set these all aside and work on a different section. The next thing we need to do is make half square triangles. So I have a green triangle and a white triangle. I'll just match these up and we'll sew along this long side. This is a small half square triangle. These triangles were cut from a one and seven eighth inch square and our half, our half square triangle will be one and a half inch. So it is, it is a tiny one. We need eight of these and they're all made in the exact same way. And after you have this put together, you'll just trim these overhangs and then this half square triangle will be ready to use. We need to make, like I said, eight of these. Then we'll take two of those eight and we'll take a green square and a white square and we're going to make a corner unit that we use in our block. So just pay attention to the layout of your half square triangles here. Uh, it's easy to get them turned around but we want the greens going, they're going to be pointing toward each other. So I'm going to sew this together. I'm just laying one half square triangle on top of a white square and then we're going to um, Put the bottom portion of the corner unit together so my half square triangle is kind of pointing in toward the other one and then i have a green square and then what it's going to look like this so far there and i'm just going to lay it on top we're going to fold one side over on top of the other and just sew the long remaining seam here I usually get it started and then stop and adjust it. I also just wanted to say about the half square triangles. Um, if you're struggling with making them how I do, where I make them the exact size, that's okay. What you can do if you wanted is cut the pieces larger. For, so for example, for these triangles, I cut them at one and seven eighths of an inch. And when that is sewn together with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, it will give me a one and a half inch half square triangle. If you're struggling with getting your half square triangle to measure one and a half inches after cutting from a one and seven eighths inch square, if you just start with a bigger square, you'll be able to follow the same process where it's one at a time, if you like that, and then you'll just need to trim it down. So if you started with a two inch square or a two and a quarter inch square and cut on the diagonal, sew those two triangles together, 
your half square triangle when you're finished sewing that will be bigger than one than one and a half but if you take that then to your cutting mat with a rotary cutter and cut a one and a half inch half square triangle you'll have the size that you need to continue making your pieces so that's an option for you um you're going to need more fabric than what i call for in the in the pattern so for example if i'm saying four one and seven eighth inch squares you might want to use four two and a quarter inch squares uh, but you'll get the same results if you trim those half square triangles down after you're piecing them so this is our corner unit we need to make four of those i have those already and actually now all of our pieces are made we have a center and then we can start assembling so when we're laying this out I have this unit here. This is gonna be my corner. And right next to that, I'm gonna lay one of these petal units. So I'm just gonna put it on top and sew this together with a quarter of an inch seam. The next thing I'm gonna add is a petal unit with a center. So I'm just gonna match these up along this side here and we're gonna sew down with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. We have another corner unit to another uh, petal unit. And this will be the first two columns of the block sewn together after this one. Okay. This is what it looks like so far. And then we're going to add a corner unit here to this top side. And another petal unit here across from the center. Okay, and then the final corner. And when I cut this thread then, we have our block is almost together. We have two seams left. This is what we look like so far, and we just need to sew these last two seams. So you can decide how you want to push your seams as you're sewing this middle together. Because these blocks are going to be framed in our quilt, it doesn't quite matter how you have your seams pressed because the blocks don't actually interact with each other. So you just do whatever um, direction is best for each block, and that works really well. And then this is what our block looks like. And this is what our block 11 looks like. If you have any questions on making this, just let me know and I'll be sure to help you out. And if not, I'll see you back here soon for block 12. Thanks for following along.